So one of the books that made a really big impact on my life is a book called The Divine Conspiracy by Dallas Willard. Um, this I was introduced to this book at a really pivotal part in my life. Um, I was a pastor in the Cincinnati area. I had been leading a, a small church at the time. And um, it's not that I had a bad experience there, but my experience kind of was opposed to what I thought pastoral ministry would be. I was expecting to serve in such a way that people are uh, learning how to live well, live abundantly, be set free of different things. And uh, my experience was anything uh, but that. In fact, in my own personal life, I wasn't experiencing the joy and freedom that um, I thought was part and parcel of discipleship. Indeed, one of the things that I began to think is that every now and again, God would just um, pick somebody, a Martin Luther King Jr., a, a Dietrich Bonhoeffer, a St. Francis, and just kind of infuse them with uh, an abundance of grace uh, so that they could live a really um, admirable life. And I started to kind of in a depressive way think that I just hadn't become one of those people uh, because the way I was pastoring, I wasn't growing in Christ likeness. The people I was serving, though they were good people, my relationship with them kind of um, uh, let me know that they were also struggling and weren't growing in Christ likeness as well. So I got moved to a different church as part of a, a, a program for young pastors. And when I moved there, I, I kind of said to myself, I'm either going to learn how to pastor in such a way that I can help people uh, live the kind of life that the Bible says is possible, or I'm just going to quit. I'm going to go back. And, you know, if, I'm, if, if pastoring isn't going to enable me to help people live well, I may as well go get a corporate job and make a lot of money. You know what I mean? That was my mindset at the time, at least. So I get to this new church, and when I'm sitting in my office, um, a guy comes in and he's looking at my bookshelves and he asked how I arranged them because they weren't in alphabetical order. And so I told them, I told him I put all the books that I've read on one bookshelf and then all the books that I still need to read on another bookshelf. Because many pastors, and even if you're not a pastor, you probably are afflicted with the same uh, affliction that I have where you buy books that you want to read, but before you get a chance to, you buy a whole bunch of other books. So when he looks at the bookshelf uh, filled with books that I haven't read yet, he stops at the Divine Conspiracy, then he pulls it out, he puts it on my desk, and he says, you need to read this one next. And man, I tell you, reading that book was, um, it felt like I was standing on one edge of a chasm, and on the other side, there was the abundant life. There was a uh, Life as a disciple of Jesus, there was joy, uh, peace, all the fruits of the Spirit there. Um, before I read the book, there was no bridge between that chasm. But as I made my way through the book, it felt like that bridge just kept on appearing. That's what Dallas Willard did for me uh, through this book. He really helped me see how it was possible to live an abundant life um, by giving me a fresh perspective of what it meant to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Um, and I'm just so grateful. I, I continue to be a pastor today because of Dallas Willard and especially because of the insights that I gained from the divine conspiracy. Um, so let me just share a few of the insights because uh, I'd like for you to, to read it as well or listen to it on Audible. So as I said, the first insight was I really didn't have a, a firm concept on what it meant to be a disciple. I had an understanding of being a Christian but Willard kind of explains how the two terms have diverged throughout uh, church history. Discipleship is, as he says in the book, being with Jesus, learning from him how to live my life the way that he would live my life if he were I. That's a lot different than simply professing something, uh, a belief about God. And so that kind of, that enlightening just, um, it really gave me a time to just sit down uh, and reflect upon what all that meant and if I was doing that and how I could pastor in such a way that uh, people would be uh, inspired to do that as well. Another thing that I got from him from his teaching was the spiritual disciplines. Of course, I'd heard of spiritual disciplines, uh, but I didn't really see them as being part and parcel of being a disciple. I didn't really consider the fact that uh, our part of our following Jesus meant doing the things that he did. And a lot of the things that he did with regularity, prayer, fasting, study, uh, serving others, obviously, 
those were disciplines for the spiritual life that enabled him to uh, to live with such grace. And so he, he really helped me connect the dots in thinking, if Jesus did these things to strengthen and foster his life with God, and I'm following Jesus, then perhaps I could stand to do the things that Jesus did if I too would like to strengthen uh, my life with God and live a life of incredible grace. Uh, that all came from reading The Divine Conspiracy. The most enlightening part of this book uh, for me was actually a section, I believe it's in chapter three or four, uh, or maybe three and five. He mentions it twice, but he, he talks about how many Christians, uh, if you were to ask them off the cuff who the smartest person to have ever lived was, many of them would, or few of them would say that it was Jesus. And man, when I got to that part, I just paused, I put the book down, and I thought about it because if you were to ask me off the cuff, my answer definitely would not have been Jesus. I would have said, um, you know, somebody like uh, Albert Einstein or, or King Solomon or, or one of these physicists that has gone on to discover amazing things that have moved society forward. But I wouldn't have said Jesus. And I began to realize that the problem with thinking that someone was smarter than Jesus in any area of life is that when I have a problem in that area of life, I would go to that person and not go to Jesus. And so I began to see that I had a limited understanding of, of just the person of Jesus and the capacity of Jesus and the wisdom of Jesus. And like I tell many of my friends, I've learned more about Jesus from Dallas Willard just to, just to kind of view him the way that the, uh, his disciples would have viewed him, the way that they were impressed uh, with him, the, the the ways he held them spellbound. I mean, people went nuts about Jesus, and uh, Willard really helped me uh, to gain that kind of perspective so I can see Jesus in a new light, which kind of inspired uh, a new devotion to him within me and a new desire to want to learn more about him and study his life so that I can become uh, like him. So um, I, when I whenever I do book reviews, I like to share what my favorite quote was. It was really hard to pick my favorite quote from The Divine Conspiracy, but I settled on one that's near the end of the book. Um, it's pretty long, so just, just listen. It says, The appeal and power of Jesus' call to the kingdom and discipleship is great, and people generally of every type and background will respond favorably if that call is only presented with directness, generosity of spirit, intelligence, and love, trusting God alone for the outcome. We may not soon have bigger crowds around us, and in fact, they may for a while even get smaller, but we will soon have bigger Christians for sure. This is what I call church growth for those who hate it. And bigger crowds are sure to follow for the simple reason that human beings desperately need what we bring to them, the word and reality of the kingdom among us. Read the book. If you haven't read it yet, please read the book. In fact, read any book that Dallas would uh, has written because he, he offers a, a, a fresh glimpse into the kingdom of God and Jesus who brings that kingdom to us. Uh, I do have a link to buy the book in the description. It's an affiliate link. So if you do buy it through that uh, link, uh, it won't cost you any extra, but I may uh, get some uh, back from the commission. Um, and then I also posted a link in the description to some chapter summaries uh, on my blog on Substack. So Perhaps you want to read the summaries before you buy the book, then head over to that Substack and uh, read those summaries. And uh, then uh, after reading my summaries, hopefully I did a good enough job that it will inspire you to buy the book. Well, thank you for listening. Thanks for asking this question. I'm going to make a few videos about some other books that have impacted my life as well. Take care, guys.